Larry, all right, you got you want us to buy beef, coffee, <laughs> and fertilizer, right? Why? What's the idea here? Well, if you look back in history, with higher deficits, uh, a weaker dollar, and money that's flowing out of bonds, it's not walking away from bonds, it's running away from bonds right now. That capital has to go somewhere. About a trillion and a half dollars has gone into passive asset management strategies, strategies risk parity, and a lot of that's in bonds. And uh, right now, that money's getting uh, filleted, and uh, investors for the first time are seeing their stocks and bonds down together, and that money's going to run to commodities. Okay, but we should point out, this is not a long-term investment you're talking about. This is short-term trade you're talking about, right? Well, it's a short-term trade in a first inning, but uh, through in the next couple of years, it should, be, it should do just quite well. Yeah. How, how well? What, what kind of appreciation are you Well, looking? I think the risk-reward in some of these commodity-based ETFs, like the DBA, which is agricultural side, I think your downside is 5 to 10 percent, but your upside is 50 to 70 percent over the next year and a half, two years. Is well, this you, your inflation play? I think it's part of it, and you've seen it already. Soft ags are probably six to nine months behind, like the steel sector, for example. So I think Larry's spot on, and he does incredibly thoughtful work. So look at a move like a U.S. steel, which went from $18 to $44 in the course of about six months. I'm not suggesting you're going to see the same thing in Mosaic, but a lot of these stocks make sense. John Deere, for example, reasonable valuation, off a great earnings report. If the tape is benign, that works. Mosaic works. And I'll give you another stock, Terex, which is cheaper than John Deere and just came off a somewhat tepid earnings release. But you know what? This could be one of those uh, rising tides lift but all here, boats things. Here's one of the issues, though. It, it is predicated on this inflation trade, which we have to describe what we're even talking about. That doesn't happen. We go to next month, the payroll support, the wage number isn't that great. You know, is there a case, and, and it's such a cyclical business, you know, this stuff fluctuates up and down like crazy. So it's a futures market. You know, the, there, there are risk factors that people have to keep in mind here. Yes. The, the narrative could change it. Just to say it's uh, inflation hedge doesn't mean that's where we're headed. Well, we're coming out of an absolute grizzly bear market in commodities, and especially, like you said, on, on the soft side, agricultural commodities. Six out of the last seven years, six out of seven years down negative returns. So could it take a little while to play out? It may, but you have to remember, since the sequester in 2011, think of Washington, we haven't had any demand side fiscal stimulus. Now we've got trillion dollar deficits this year, maybe next year a trillion two. And for the first time, we've got deregulation and that stimulus is oozing through the U.S. economy. Plus with the weak dollar, we've had a tremendous amount of global debt because of the weak dollar. That's all that debt globally in emerging markets is feeding back to the United States. It's all creating a new demand side dynamic that should support inflation. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.